I did not know that people care what comedians say. <laughs> That literally came as news to me. I don't think the, as I said, the extreme left has done anything to inhibit the art of comedy. Right. I'm, I'm taking that back now officially. Got they it. have not. Anna Kasparian and Jen Uger are going head to head on the Young Turks. And things are getting pretty heated. This time, they're debating woke censorship, particularly from the left. As expected, Anna and Jen have very different takes on the issue. Anna calls out Jen for his stance on left-wing censorship in comedy and the media. She's clearly not happy with him backing this kind of censorship, and doesn't hold back in checking him on it. Let's dive into this intense clip from The Young Turks, where Anna Kasparian completely shuts down Jen Uger during their heated debate. But they have. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, so he is we'll all debate. of a sudden... We'll debate. Backtracking on a statement he made back in April where he said that the left ruined comedy. Now look, the left ruining comedy, hyperbolic. That is a little bit ridiculous. But does, do some factions of the left try to police comedy because they take great offense to funny comedy? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah they do, but, um, but I, I agree with Jerry, like I get his frustration. So like whenever they're busting Kamala Harris or some Democrat, corporate Democrat on some extreme left thing that they did, and we're supposed to be to the left of them, and we are, but on economic issues, on things that make sense, uh, they're like, aha, and you agreed, said this. I never agreed to any of that, I'm on the record. Whenever the Democrats go too far, I go, no, nope, not buying it. I'm not in favor of that. I don't think we should pay for undocumented trans surgeries while they're in custody that's i don't know why we're doing that they're not american citizens etc and watch like like leftists will get super mad about me saying that no right? they're melting down right now right speak, and yeah. so i never agreed to any of the extreme stuff but there was a moment when i got so frustrated with the police abuse i originally was against defund the police very strongly and they got tons of pushback on that I remember, right yep. and for like a minute i was like god damn it maybe we should defund the police and then i Regained my senses and, and and went back to my original position. So I understand where Jerry's coming from. He got frustrated by the leftists who you're right do exist who are like, you can't joke about that. And I'm really curious about what you all think because in my opinion, the left totally ruined comedy for a while. A lot of comedians like Seth Rogen and others used to be hilarious, but after aligning with certain left wing views, they just aren't as funny anymore. Between 2017 and 2021, it felt like comedy was in a rough spot, especially on TV and in Hollywood, where everyone was being overly cautious about what they could say. Nowadays, though, it seems like most stand-up comedians just don't care about cancel culture as much. They're pushing back and not letting it control their material. So yeah, for a while, I do think the left hurt comedy, but I don't think that's the case anymore. There are still some unfunny, obnoxious comedians out there, but the stand-ups that are thriving now are just ignoring cancel culture and doing their thing. Do you agree? Let me know your thoughts. And do you know how insensitive it is to joke about that? Yeah, yeah, right? the, the killjoys who right. could very easily just not go to a comedy show that they find offensive. Yeah, You know, it's called making decisions for yourself. And if you don't like the comedy, don't consume the comedy and move on with your life. Yeah, and so, but- But you don't get to be the arbiter of like, what kind of comedy everyone else gets to hear. Yes and no, so now, but I agree with Jerry that he did go too far and I like that he's bringing it back, okay? All right. So, uh, because what he's saying is, Look, guys, we got to read the room. That's our job as comics. And Bill Burr's been saying that. A lot of top comics are saying that now. So the momentum has swung from stop crying about people's complaints and do goddamn comedy, okay? Well, that and I agree with. Like, I, I also can't stand comedians incessantly whining about people being offended by their jokes. I get that it's annoying. I get that it's frustrating when people are trying to police your comedy. But also, let's not forget who has the power here. Yeah, so, so let me let me give you an example of, in my opinion, where we went too far, where the comics went too far, right? Uh, but how, to distinguish between who's right and wrong. Anyway, so for a while, every comedy set was about, oh, they don't let me make this joke, but watch this, trans people, you suck. <laughs> I'm like, that's not a joke. It's, yeah, exactly. That's and then I'd watch there for half an hour, an hour, and guys who were 
enormously funny before, like Dave Chappelle, all of a sudden like doing nothing but like, I'm so bold because I say things that people hate. I actually think Dave Chappelle did lose some of his edge because he leaned so heavily into the fact that people were attacking him. But I don't think he was wrong in what he said. Sure, maybe he wasn't as funny as he used to be, but his first Netflix special with the trans jokes sparked a massive backlash. People were quitting their jobs at Netflix, and there were actual protests outside their headquarters. People cared so much that they wanted the special taken down, and I was honestly surprised Netflix didn't cave, considering how woke they are. It must have been making them a ton of money for them to keep it up. Dave Chappelle was getting death threats, and there were serious protests from employees and others who were furious about the jokes. In response, it seems like he doubled down and kept making those jokes, almost to spite the outrage. Even though it might have gotten a little less funny each time, I don't think he was ever wrong in what he said. What do you think? Do you agree with how Dave handled it at all? Let me know in the comments. No, you have to actually include a joke, right? But I then saw the Ricky Gervais episode, uh, so, and I was like, look, I don't want him beating up on trans people again, like every other comic, and I heard that he did in his set, and I was super frustrated. Then I watched it, and I was like, no, that was funny. And uh, and he wasn't beating up on them. He was making a joke and then saying, but guys, of course we don't believe that. It's called comedy, right? And he he shouldn't have to explain that. You should be able to get it from the way that he makes the joke, and I did. But I, it, the times being what they were, I appreciate that he even clarified, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought Gervais did it exactly right. Chappelle, it, as much as I respected him in the past, I thought, was so unfunny for so many specials. They where, turned into lectures. Yeah, some of those they, specials did turn into lectures, and it's like, I get that you are frustrated at the backlash you're getting, but it's getting to your head too much, and it's hurting your comedy. Like, move on. Hundred <laughs> percent. Move on. So they, it then became like some sort of like debate between leftists yeah. and comics, and nobody was having fun. Hundred percent. So when Burr and the others, and now Jerry are. Saying, no, let's get back to comedy and not worry about what the critics are saying. We're comics. So just do your comedy, and if it's funny, people will love it. And do, do you have to change with the time sometimes? Of course, of course. People used to use the N word in comedy all the time. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a lot. Now, let's get back to the video. Because our culture changed, and you got to change with that. You can't be like a cranky old 98 year old comic. Going, I remember when we used to be able to say hateful things and people laugh. Now they're not even laughing at it anymore. Yeah, they're not. So move, keep, find something funny. Do you, okay, I remember, okay, there's that NFL guy who's kind of cute and was married to. Giselle Bunchen. What was his name? Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Okay. There's they that did, NFL guy. So they did a, <laughs> they did a roast of him. They did. And it was great. It, yeah. Like there were a lot of offensive jokes, and it was great. Sometimes you just sometimes you just want to laugh. You want to be able to laugh at yourself. You want to be able to just like take some of these issues that are heavy, serious issues and make light of them. I'm completely on board with what Anna Kasparian said. Let the market decide, because that's what people like Jen Uger were trying to avoid. They were focused on hurt feelings, ignoring how much content like this is actually bringing in. That's why we saw protests. But in the end, the market spoke. Netflix must have been making serious money from that Dave Chappelle special, otherwise, why keep it up? It went against Netflix's usual woke narrative, yet it stayed because it was clearly a hit. It was bold, anti-woke, and even caused real life protests outside their headquarters. Kasparian's right, let the market sort it out. If people are paying for it, if it's successful, then that's what matters. People's emotions shouldn't dictate content, especially if it's making money and resonating with an audience. What's your take on this? Do you think Anna Kasparian was right in calling out Jen Uger on this episode of The Young Turks? Drop your thoughts in the comments.